Hey everybody, welcome to another Age of Sigmar battle report. Uh, today we're going to do a thousand points of Corn versus a thousand points of Stormcast Eternals. I've been reading, or finished reading, the uh, two first two volumes of the Realmgate Wars. You can see those here. Talked about a little bit of them on, uh, on social media. And so I've got some inspiration uh, from those books. Also finished the Soul Wars novel, which is kind of the latest novel with the new edition. Uh, so the kind of the setup for this is uh, these corn guys are up to no good and the sort of the Necroquake blast that took place at the beginning of Soul Wars has uh, caused these little kind of rifts and magical kind of entities floating around and then they're trying their priests and things are trying to sort of extract that and maybe recreate some kind of realm gate that's open just to corn and then uh, we've got sort of a a devoted of Sigmar Priest who's found this out and then called down the Stormcast Eternals to come down. There's going to be kind of a mix of old and new Stormcast and then pretty much just all old uh, corn. So it's a thousand points. We're going to be playing, th the scenario will be three places of power. So the heroes will be very important in controlling the different locations. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So here you can see kind of an overlay of the battlefield. We've got the corn fortress over there. It's kind of dilapidated. There's some ruins forces of corn over there and then we have here our three places of power which you can also see up here on this view here so we've got one two three and these are going to need to be controlled by uh, heroes and so let's just take a quick look at our corn forces here now the bulk of the numbers here are made up by these 30 uh, blood reavers there these are kind of our chaff they're going to kind of run up now, sort of tucked in the middle there, you can see that guy with the big corn banner. That's our blood secretor. That's a general. Uh, he's got a portal to open up skulls and, and sort of uh, really buff up these very, very weak units there. Now, he's going to be supported by that slaughter priest there. That's kind of a converted slaughter priest with some uh, fleshy court bits and some destruction bits. And then we also have here another guy tucked in back here. If I'll move this guy here like that. That's all right, we'll fix that. This guy right there, he's another slaughter priest. Now that makes up a battalion, which also has these blood warriors tucked in back here. So that's a large battalion called Gore Pilgrims, and they are very much focused on the blood secretor being the linchpin, opening up a wider portal of skulls because of the two slaughter priests, and then really sort of getting the anger up with these guys. Now it's also supplemented by a uh, skull cannon here, sort of a little bit of an artillery piece. Now the gist of this army is to kill lots of stuff. Every time you kill stuff, or this particular slaughter priest casts a certain uh, prayer, then we're going to get some uh, blood tithe points, and hopefully we can then open this portal, which is tucked behind this fortress here, and get some of these daemons out. We've got other blood crushers and cannons and blood letters, and then a blood master, which is a hero. Uh, now, heroes, again, are important because you need heroes here to control each of these three uh, objective markers. So they only can be controlled by heroes, and you need heroes within three inches. So that's kind of the corn treatment. If we go over here, you can see we've also got some Stormcast Judicators, two units here, waiting off in the winds here. They're just off to the side. These guys are still up in a zir, ready to kind of like do a deep strike maneuver. Uh, because you can do that with a Stormcast Allegiance. And then our general here is this Lord Arcanum on Griff Charger. This is one of the new Sacrosanct Chamber fellas. And he's supplemented by this uh, Celestar Ballista. And he also we also have a Lord Ordinator. So the Ballista unit is just normally that big gun with the two sort of pilots that are manning it. And now we're going to slap down a Lord Ordinator, which is going to give it the ability to kind of have plus one to hit. So these are just going to kind of park down here and take shots at the battlefield. On the other side over here, we've got a unit of sequiturs with a very small foot troop uh, footprint, just the five of them. And then we have back here, here's our devoted to Sigmar uh, priest. And then he's got his little buddy Griffhound, which he gets uh, for free. You don't actually have to pay for him. Uh, as far as the uh, artifacts and stuff, I didn't take a, uh, whatever, it's a staunch defender uh, with Sky, which will give, give a buff to save. Uh, he took a thing that will actually give his weapons uh, one more attack and so on, just because I didn't really think it would be that useful because these guys already get the reroll to ones, and he's got a command ability that allows them to get that along with their extra hits. Uh, as far as this guy, I jumped a bunch of defensive artifacts on, and traits and things on the... Uh, the blood secretor there because he's very much the linchpin. If he goes down, 
uh, then that army sort of falls apart. So that's kind of the setup now. The, these guys have two drops, basically everybody, and then the skull cannon. So there are two drops, so they're gonna go first, and they're of the first battle round. So let's jump into the first battle round and we'll go corn turn one. So going into the hero phase, we're gonna have this guy cast a prayer there. And what this is gonna do is if he rolls a four up, then his prayer will succeed. He will then create a blood tithe point if he gets a four up. So we don't have to actually have anybody die. Normally a unit has to die. So there we got our four. Uh, the thing with the battalion I took is actually if you fail, then you can reroll prayers for the priests that are in the battalion, but I don't have to do that here. So we get a blood tithe point, but when you do that, you have to basically target one of your own units and they lose D3 mortal wounds, which, okay, we lost two. So that's gonna kill off two of our reavers over here. So these guys are gonna go bye-bye. And we'll set them over there for battle shock later. And the other priest who is tucked behind the blood secretor there, he's got a uh, killing frenzy. He's gonna actually cast it over here onto the uh, skull cannon. So again, we're gonna do a four up there. Uh, he succeeds as well. So that's gonna give him a uh, plus one to hit. So that's it for the hero phase. Now, typically you might actually uh, have this guy open his portal of skulls, but I'm gonna have him wait, get him moved up a little bit upfield because we do want them to, again, start to come after the, um, uh, these, these objectives, because again, the heroes are the ones that need to control the objectives. So now we're gonna go ahead and move these up, and we're gonna go ahead and just run everybody up, except for the Skull Cannon, who's gonna try to get a shot off. We'll see if he can. So the Reavers can move six, so six plus six, but they also get plus one because they've got a horn blower uh, in the unit. I've got the banners and the horn blowers and things. Uh, the leader's just one guy with an ax there, probably kind of lost in the group. Everybody else just has the normal blades. So these fellas here have moved up, up to there, and so you can see they're right within uh, spitting distance of that objective there. Now we're gonna go ahead and run up the blood secretor and then the two priests as well, get them up in this area for cover. The secretor moves four normally, so four plus five is nine, and then we're gonna do the two priests starting with the uh, sacrificer, so that's a 10, and then an eight. Let's see, so we get this up six, lose an inch there, move up a couple and then we'll just kind of have tuck him right in there anyway. So this guy's gonna move six plus four. We'll keep him tight with these guys. And then this guy's just gonna tuck up into here like that. And we're gonna spread out these blood warriors here to kind of protect our back line. Because remember, we do have those judicators that can just drop in as long as they're nine inches from an enemy. So we don't wanna leave a gap for them uh, out in this area. So we're just gonna spread them out. I'll go ahead and run them here. It's gonna be five plus four. So that's nine total. Yeah, so these guys will just spread out to here. And we're gonna move this guy out of the way anyway. About an inch. I'll just check for the nine. I don't think there's any nine inches around here. Now the skull cannon here moves eight. I'm not gonna run him though, cause I wanna try to get a shot off. If I can take a look here. He's maybe has line of sight down over to uh, this fella here, this ballista. So we're gonna try to get him off up into this little corner there and we'll see how that goes. He'll go to right about there. Again, he's got the plus one to shoot. Now he needs 30 inches, which he's got. He's got that, now this guy's in cover, so he's gonna add to his save. Now normally he hits on a three, he's gonna hit on a two now. So he's got that. So he needs a three to wound. Now he misses the wound there. Now I could charge all of these guys here, but they're all well outside 12 inches. So this is gonna end uh, their turn. Now they're gonna have to take a battle shock test. They only have a bravery of five. He hasn't opened up his portal of skulls yet. So when this guy opens his portal of skulls, any of these slaughter priests that are within eight inches of him, uh, which I should double check that. This guy, oh yeah, he's still within eight inches. <laughs> um, so that's gonna increase his range to 30 inches, gonna add a bunch of attacks. Uh, make everybody immune to battle shock. So right now I lost two guys. Uh, I don't want to lose any more because they, they are a lot of them, but they, they don't come so cheap as you would think. So I'm going to spend the one command point uh, from the general because he is within 12 inches there just to auto pass uh, battle shock with the command rule. So that's going to end uh, corn turn one. We're going to go into Stormcast turn one. They're going to get their command point. So I don't 
know that we're going to do much in the way of command points or spells or anything like that. We could try to cast uh, Mystic Shield actually onto our sec orders, which will allow them to reroll ones uh, on the saves, which they already have built in, but they have to make this choice in combat to add one to their hits or reroll save. So let's go ahead and do uh, this here. So he needs a five to do that. So we'll try that there, get, try to get a five. Oh, he definitely got that. Now, uh, this guy here, if he's within 18 inches, he can force a reroll. He's not, but I do need to check here and see if uh, probably this slaughter priest is within 30 inches to actually unbind it. And he is actually in 30 inches, so that was a nine we got there. So we have to try to reroll and beat that. Oh, he does beat that, so that will block the Mystic Shield. So we're going to go ahead and run our Lord Arcanum. These guys are going to stay put, of course. And then these guys here, uh, we're just going to have them, uh, we'll have them just move up a bit. Actually, I'll have to check their movement because it might, I may just run them and then try for the double turn. Actually, I'm almost sure that I'll do that. But, but try to, I, I probably have to make like a 12 inch charge or something uh, this far away. So I'm just going to go ahead and run everybody, run the priest and the griff hound and so on. So he normally moves 12, so we'll run him up. And then we're going to do two, so that's 14. He does have a move where you can go 66 inches and run really crazy, but I'm going to save that uh, for later on. So he's going to go up 14, and he's going to try to get to that objective on the left. And then we'll do the runs for the sequiturs and everybody over there. So sequiturs first, they get a three. Uh, the priest will get a two. And the griffhound doesn't really need one because he moves nine anyway, it gets a four. So we'll get these guys moved up. And then we'll just tuck the Griffhound in front of this guy. The Griffhound does get a buff to his attacks if he stays within range of the priest there. So that's everybody's move. Now these guys ran, so they can't charge. Uh, I am going to take a look at line of sight here on the Ballista, which I'm sure he's got. So you can see he definitely has line of sight there uh, on him. And he's definitely uh, not in cover. So this guy's got an interesting ability where he, uh, well, if he gets a hit, he gets D6 hits. So let's take a look at the distance. So he's got one ability that does like kind of a machine gun fire, but that's 18 inches. That's only about to there. The other one, it's 36. So he's got plenty of room there. So he gets one attack here. Uh, so he gets, normally on threes, but he gets the Lord Ordinator there is, uh, is right next to him. So he's going to get it on twos. So he's got that. So that's going to be D6 hits. That's two hits only. And then this is going to wound on, let's see, threes. That's one, and that's going to be a minus two rend. So this guy has normally a save of four. It's going to make it a save of six. Doesn't get it. But it's only one damage. So we'll just go ahead and put a damage on him. That's going to take him down to uh, six wounds. So he's in good shape still. So that's the end of round one. These guys are just going to stay put. These guys are moving up here for close combat. Most likely, almost definitely next turn. Uh, these guys are going to pop their portal of skulls, so getting the first turn on this is going to be somewhat important. Uh, I'm keeping the uh, the bow and arrow guys here in reserve until we get some kind of established uh, positioning here, uh, just because you can drop them in anywhere. So uh, there's no reason for them to come out yet. There's everybody still uh, pretty much as they were when we started the game. So let's do the roll off. So blue will be stormcast, white is corn. This is for initiative. Uh, so Storm Stormcast have won that one. So going into Stormcast turn two, I'm going to try to cast an Arcane Bolt over here because he's got kind of a beefed up Arcane Bolt. So we're going to roll this one here. That's an eight. That will succeed, but he is in range to be uh, unbound. So we need more than an eight. And that is only a six. Now an eight for him is just going to be still, I think... Yeah, it's still just D3 mortal wounds. So normally it's one and then D3 if you roll more than 10, but he can actually get up to D6. So D3 wounds there. That's going to be two more mortal wounds off of the cannon there. So that's it for the hero phase. Now the movement phase is a little bit interesting because I've got this guy. He can easily move over here and take that, and he'll be sort of on his own away from the combat here. I could also try to get him to pop up onto this one which will keep him more engaged, but also put him at more risk as well. Uh, so that's a tricky call there. Hmm. I've got this hero here that I could move up, but I really don't want to move him up. I've got this hero here, which is obviously going to try to squinch up into there because 
uh, even though these guys have a ton of guys, they also are building a wall from their slaughter priest kind of coming up as well. Um, so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep him safe for now because he can do the 66 move. So we're gonna move him over here. I think it's probably about 12. Yeah, he doesn't have to run or anything, so he can just move straight up there. He's within three. Uh, let's just keep him, yeah, I'll just keep him just outside three here. So move him there and then we should score a point for blue at the end of the round. Now this is gonna actually accrue, uh, not exponentially, but it goes up every round. So while he stays there, uh, this is gonna go up to two points, he's on the next turn and three points the turn after that. So this is almost a way to sort of bait people over as well. So I don't know that I actually needed to uh, move over here into the center uh, because he's gonna sit here and, and accrue a bunch of points and run away if nobody engages with him. So that's his movement. We're gonna keep here the uh, ordinator and the ballistas tucked in. And then these guys, we're just gonna move them just outside three and then charge in. So let's just go and roll and roll the charge because they've got the movement. So that's a charge of six. So I'll move them within three and then figure out the charge. And then these guys are not going to charge. They're just gonna stay back here. Um, he's gotta be able to run to get up there anyway. So I definitely don't want him in combat. So now I've got the six, I can pile these guys in around like so. And this guy I'm just gonna put right on top of the marker. It's not really supposed to be a terrain piece, just a position. So he's gonna jump on top and start swinging down at these guys. And then these guys have moved up. So that's all the charges and movement. Uh, so on. Oh, I did skip the, sh the shooting for the, uh, the ballista again. So let's go ahead and we'll jump out. We'll try to shoot this uh, ballista shot over here and see. So he hits on, let's see, it's gonna be a three or two. Right, it's gonna be a two with the buff. So got that. It's gonna be a wound of a three. Oh, he misses the wound, so no matter anyway, that's because I forgot to do anything. Now these guys here have a choice. They can either add plus one to their save rolls with their shields, or I can re-roll failed hit rolls. Um, let me think about it. I think I'm gonna go with the defensive here, so I'll re-roll those, so I'm not gonna be able to re-roll the hit rolls. Oh, that's a tough one though, because, um, well, I'll tell you what, these guys, are still gonna be a little bit buffed up because this guy's within 12 inches. Anytime this large group of Reavers is within 12 inches of a guy with a totem there, they get plus one attack anyway. Hmm. I tell you what, I'm gonna do the reroll saves. <laughs> reroll saves of one. So they're gonna have basically Mystic Shield built in. Uh, but we'll go ahead and do the attacks here. Now this guy has the, the Grand Maul, he's the uh, Sequitur uh, Prime, and the rest are just using the normal Mauls. So that's gonna be, let's see, eight shots. These are gonna be hitting on threes, and then the leader there gets the plus one there. That's also gonna be hitting on threes and threes, and this one now has minus one rend and does two damage. So we're gonna roll these looking for threes, and then threes again. Okay, that one goes away. Now these are just uh, no rend, minus one damage. And the reavers are terrible, they have a six up save. So three of them will be dead. I flipped that one to a six. So the three reavers die. We'll just peel these here off the back. And then we'll have these guys here pile in. So they're all piled in there. I'm gonna count the attacks here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus the leader. So we're gonna have eight, but they're getting two attacks each. That's so gonna be 16, because they're within 12 inches of the totem. And then the ax itself will get two, hot, two hits. Uh, but these will be minus one rend, and then the whites one are re-rolling ones. I'm sorry, it's on fours and fours. So here's some ones. All right, so we'll take these out. So fours. So these would be saving on fours, uh, but again, also re-rolling ones. This one is a save on a five. Okay, reroll the one. Okay, so that's three damage there. So that's not too bad. We'll pick him off and then throw that one there. Okay, so that's gonna end that turn here. Now we do have Battle Shock here because remember we killed uh, a few guys out of this group. Uh, let's see, three total uh, for the round uh, of combat and then one guy here. Now they have a bravery of five, the Reavers do. So it's gonna be three dead guys plus three. So that's six, so they're gonna lose one more. And then the sequiturs have a bravery of seven. So even if I rolled a six, they only lost one guy, so they'd be okay. So we'll pick off another guy back here. 
But we are going to score a victory point here for the Stormcast capping that uh, for a turn. So one point to the Stormcast, and then we'll go into turn two uh, for the Bloodbound. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the portal of skulls here, which is going to make everybody not have to do battle shock. It's going to add attacks to everybody. So these guys are going to get really beefed up here on this side. And then we've got these blood warriors here that I've got to figure out what to do with, because as soon as I move them, then our little archer buddies are going to probably drop in and snipe all of these heroes. So that's an interesting little conundrum there, but they're really doing uh, no good back there. Just sitting there. Those are usually relatively deadly, deadly foes there. All right, so we're going to open his portal skulls. And that means he can't move. Now he's in cover, so he's okay. Uh, for the most part, you get some other armor and stuff on him for artifacts. Uh, and then the priest here, let's see, what's he going to do? Well, this guy's going to peel off and do, uh, hopefully peel off some mortal wounds off of them. So he needs a four up. He gets it. He's going to do D3 mortal wounds to the reavers. E, that's three. That's more than I wanted. So we'll peel these three off. They're going to go over there. That's, that's okay. That's going to give us, though, another uh, blood tithe point there. You can see now we are up to two blood tithe points for them. And they're going to, again, use those to summon some of the more interesting uh, daemon units to come out. But we're good now. We're going to keep trying to stack those up. And I think what we're going to really focus on here is probably removing, uh, excuse me, this unit here of sec orders if we can. Uh, so I think we're going to have this other priest here uh, cast the... Uh, feeding frenzy, not feeding frenzy, uh, killing frenzy onto that unit there. So let's see how that works. All right, so he needs a four. Oh, he did get it. He got a six. So now they have the plus one to hit. These guys are just going to be absolutely deadly right now because they're going to get a uh, plus one attack from that, from being a totem, and then another one from being uh, having the portal open, and then they're going to be plus one to hit and rerolling one. So they're going to be pretty deadly there. Uh, they're not going to move. We are going to move this priest up a bit. Might as well run him and see what he does. That's going to be five, so he's going to move a lot. If I tuck him in here, is that three inches? Oh, definitely, that is three inches. So he's going to start to accrue points uh, at the end of this turn. So we'll go ahead and mark this spot here so that I remember to give points to corn. Uh, so he moved up, and we're just going to have this guy dural up here a little bit. Just get him up, tucked in behind there. Shave a little bit off of movement since he's climbing those runes. Let's see. These guys could move. Uh, this I don't know why I want those guys getting close to anybody. They can take some shots here at that guy. Uh, I definitely want to leave the warriors over there. I think that's, that's a bummer, but it's sort of a stalemate. I, I'm keeping a bunch of shooters. Well, actually, yeah, I think probably next turn Stormcast are bringing them out anyway. So I do want to leave them back a bit just to kind of block that out. I'm going to leave everybody like this. So he's nobody's going to move because then we're forcing the uh, archers to come out in the front lines here, uh, which is we can hopefully deal with better. That's a lot of shots coming out. So we're going to do this guy uh, doing a shot over here since nothing is, has really happened to him. He doesn't have a plus one to hit, unfortunately. So he's only going to hit on threes and threes. Oh, that's a miss. Now, it's worth noting that he doesn't get plus one on his hits from the Blood Secretor. He will in melee, though, so it doesn't affect the range units. So he's done. Everybody's done. So I think we're going to go into uh, combat over here. So we're going to go into combat over here. Uh, these guys should be able to pile in and just do even a little bit more and get even more attacks in. Now, let's see. Did get kind of locked in. I could have got one more guy in, but this guy would have moved too far around the closest unit there. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, plus that guy. So we've got now three attacks each. So 33 on, on the rerolling ones, and then another four here because he's got the extra attack. Oh, I actually I should have rolled an extra die for him last time. That's fine. Um, so so 33 of those, and then four of the blue ones. So we're just gonna do this, this rerolling ones hitting on threes. Okay, we got ten more or twenty-three more to go. I've got six hits so far. Look at those real long ones. So twenty-one hits plus another three. So that's twenty-four hits. So these are the with the minus one, but not re-rolling run. Oh, I got all those. Let's just do these real quick. So that'll be um, uh, fours. 
So there's two at minus one, and we got 24 here on fours. Good Lord. So that's nine. 12 saves, and then two more at minus one. Rerolling ones because they have the shields. Which I didn't declare, but come on. <laughs> okay, so we'll take everything out. That's not a four. I saved pretty good there. Okay, so that is five. So that's gonna kill three of them. So one on there, two, two, yep. So just the prime's gonna be left. So he's gonna stay where he's at, pile in. So you get three attacks with the bonus leader attack threes. There's three of those, three more. Ah, so this will be minus one Ren, so that's an automatic dead guy. Oh, actually, I'm automatic two dead guys because it's uh, it's actually two hits there. So that'll peel two more off the back. They got two banners in there. I don't need two. Now the Reavers don't have to worry about battle shock because again we have our friend over here, the Blood Secretor. Uh, but these guys we've lost now three dead bodies there. They've got a bravery of seven. So three plus four is seven. So they're okay. On a five, the uh, prime here would have fled. Okay, so we're going to score the one victory point there for the corn. So the current score is one to one. Now we're going to roll for turn three initiative. So again, blues are stormcasts. So Stormcast will get the decision to go first. I think they are. They're going to drop in some uh, some heat. Uh, but first we're going to do the hero phase. So really we just have this guy over here. We don't want him to leave there because that's we're getting points out of that. We may have to get out of dodge here. Probably want to bug out this priest, send him towards the middle. We'll drop in some uh, adjudicators in this kind of open space here. Maybe we'll start to creep... Uh, this fella up here a little bit. I mean, it's gonna, you know, we need to get it within range so we can start doing some damage. It's going to lose a little bit of its protection though. Um, hmm. I don't know. We're not, nobody's gonna get dro dropped behind, so I think we'll move these guys up as well. But as far as the, gosh, so this guy can heal, uh, this guy here. So this guy, you know what this guy's gonna do here? He's gonna try to pop off uh, another arcane bolt into this because this guy's annoying. All right, so we're gonna do that. That's gonna be a five. Oop, that's a 10, but it can be uh, unbound. I don't think that guy's within 18. Let me check the blood secretor. Oh, he is not, so I don't have to auto reroll a, a success. If he's if he's chilling out over there with his, uh, his portal open, anything within 18 inches uh, has to automatically reroll a success. So we got here a 10, so the Priest is trying to, uh, the priest one rolls a nine. So that is gonna be, uh, well, that was a 10 though. So that's gonna be actually, is that D6? Yes, it is. Oh, so that could be brutal. Uh, that guy there only has four uh, hit points left. Uh, we got a three. So he's gonna be down to one. So he's on his last leg. So that's a good sign. Other than it gives probably them another blood point, tithe point when he dies, which you could just summon it right back. <laughs> okay, so that, that is the, the hero phase. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bug out this priest over here. We'll take a look over here. So that priest is gonna go bye-bye. And he's gonna go head over this way. He's gonna run, probably just get behind this. And then I gotta make enough room to drop in some, uh, some of those adjudicators at this point to kind of screen off. Cause they do have to be within nine, outside nine inches. So we're gonna run him over, let's see what happens. All right, he's got a run of a uh, normal move of five. That's gonna get him six, and the Griff Hound is nine plus that, so that's 12. Uh, let's put him on this side. We'll just keep him in front, like that kind of blocking. And now we're gonna drop in some Judicator squads, and they've gotta stay outside nine. All right, so we plop them there to just outside nine of both of those. They do have a real clear shot on this guy. He's in cover, though, on the uh, on the Blood Secretor there that's uh, camping out there. So I probably wanna just get a bunch of more shots in on him. And I think I've got room right over here on this side. Yeah, if we just take a quick scooch over there. Aha, oh, ta-da! Now they're just outside of nine of him, but they still have plenty of range to just dump all kinds of shots in that blood secretor. Although he does have, like I said, a bunch of uh, defensive mechanisms. He's also in cover and stuff. 
So we'll see how that works out. Um, well, let's just, first of all, we will dump, let's pick. That's our movement phase. Uh, no, nobody's in room to charge. I wouldn't, even if I could, I mean, I can with these guys, but I don't want to charge with them. They're not very good in melee. Um, so these guys are going to shoot first into the blood secretor. Now these guys have interesting shots. So he's going to get one shot there. Those are hit on threes. This one, if it gets a hit, will do D6 hits. Okay. So these are going to hit on threes. This one, ooh, yuck. This one's gonna do D6 hits. That's five. One, two, three. There's five, and these are gonna be hitting on, is it threes? Yeah, it's threes. And then minus one rend on all of them. Okay, so there's that. So that's all hits. So that's minus one rend, but it's uh, the Blood Secretor's in cover. So that's going to not affect that. He normally has a three up save. So he's got a three up save. And then he's also got a five, six up armor. Uh, so there, that'll save those. These here, if I roll five or six, that'll just ignore uh, that wound there. Oh, so he's they only got one shot off. Even though we just dumped a buttload of shots into him, we only got one damage on him. Now, because I chose them first, I'm gonna do a quick scan there. Oh yeah, sure. Now this totem here is sort of blocking his line of sight. Uh, but that's not, that's just a marker. It's not supposed to be terrain. So we're gonna do the same thing with that group because we don't lack him. So again, here threes. Okay, that's a miss. Threes again. Oh, that's a D6 hits on that one. Almost forgot. There's six more hits. These are all minus one. Threes again on minus one rend. Well, that's good. And these are all minus one, but it doesn't matter. So three up saves. fail those and this will be a five six so this could be interesting so we get two more on him so he's down to two wounds now put a two on there so he's not looking too hot now we do also have if we remember down here the ballista is going to shoot out at this guy so he's going to be hitting on twos because he has the ordinator buffing him up oh of course so he missed that. So that would have, eh, well, he got one hit point, so that might have killed him. So that's shooting. Uh, combat wise, we're not going to do any charging or nothing like that. Uh, this, okay, this prime over here is going to try to do some kind of damage. That's going to be the only combat we have. I'm just going to roll for him and then just pull him off. I don't know. He could stay there. Let's see. So there's our lone prime there. He's going to get, uh, what is it? Just three hits. So he's gonna get threes. Now I can, I'm gonna declare re-rolling misses on hits cause he's not gonna live. So threes, got them all anyway. And then threes to wound, but we got them all. That's minus one ran two damage. So he killed six of them. So let's see, two, four, eh, six. I'm not gonna worry about battle shock cause that's portal is open. But now he's gonna get piled in on there. I'll just tuck these guys in a bit. So we got one, two, three, four, Five, six, two, four, six, plus this guy. Okay, so and they've still got the beefed up attacks. Again, for the uh, the leader there. So these are gonna be threes and then fours. <laughs> Rerolling ones on the whites. Okay, and then fours. And these are minus one ren, so these are fours. These are fives. There's two, he's dead. So that's gonna be him dead, and that's gonna give uh, Corn another blood tithe point, which will put them at three. So they're getting close to being able to summon something interesting. So that's uh, turn three for Stormcast. Uh, no battle shock here because of the portal, and there's nobody left there. So we're gonna go into turn three for the Corn uh, player. So they're up to two command points. So it would probably, oh, hold on. Forgot to score the Stormcast turn here. Uh, we're gonna go here, this is gonna go up to two points. So they're gonna get two points for controlling uh, that particular uh, region there. So we got a couple of things to do here. We can actually start to move the warriors. We're gonna keep his portal open, obviously. Uh, this guy here uh, will probably do the frenzy over on him, just to give him plus one to hit. He can pump some shots into probably uh, these judicators. I don't know which one, maybe these, maybe these, because. Uh, this is more of a contested point here. 
Uh, so we're going to, well, let's try to do that first. We'll try to cast the prayer to buff him up. So I got four. Oh, but I can reroll. Uh, that works. So he gets the plus one to hit. Now, if you roll a one normally on, uh, on these guys' prayers, they take that D3 mortal wounds there. So that's why it's good to have the reroll as well. So he's got that. This guy here over to this side is going to cast his little uh, blood sacrifice. So he's going to try to get it. So he got a four, D3 wounds. Oh, that's three. <laughs> Killed more of my own guys with, with this stuff. Uh, so we'll peel these guys off. That does give another blood sacrifice. Uh, point, so that's gonna take us up to four. Let's see what we can summon. Yeah, if I get the five, I can do a, another uh, cannon, or I can do a unit of blood crushers, which are pretty fun, especially in a smaller game like this. Uh, so I definitely wanna try to get one more. So I'm gonna try to kill a unit. Uh, so that is the, the hero phase. Movement phase. Okay, so these guys we wanna move up where? I think we wanna move up to this side over here because we've got this kind of locked down here. Do I want to keep these guys protecting that? Because nobody's coming over there right now. So I could send these guys up through the middle. Um, this is the hero that we want to get in touch there. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so let's try to get in there and get some bodies on him. I'm not too worried about him in combat. And then we'll move these guys. We'll run them up this way, right? Maybe. Well, the, the key is really going to be the central spot because he's already started to build up a little bit of a runaway points there. He's got some points starting to generate over here. So this, this middle one here might be the difference. Uh, so what we're going to do, yeah, is we'll run these guys up here. Not run them, but we'll move them up to get the charge, kind of blast away those uh, adjudicators. And then we'll run these guys up here. He stay put, and he'll shoot at these adjudicators. So these folks here have got a five plus... A three, so they're gonna move up eight, move them up. These guys, we're gonna move them up or this way. Let's see. Yeah, I'll just keep them. I don't know. They'll be outside of three anyway. Uh, this guy, we'll just turtle him up there, keep him locked in on that spot. Uh, we do wanna keep him within range there of that. So let's keep him just out off of three there. That still keeps him, yeah. So you should be able to get some stuff off on them. Uh, we'll move this guy up here but I think that puts him outside of eight now. That doesn't matter. This guy's thing is so long anyway. So he did come out of uh, the range to buff up the portal skulls. Now it's only 24 inches, which is, you know, out to here anyway. So that's all the movement. Him, we're gonna get a shot off uh, coming down here towards them. Now he's as of the plus one. So it's gonna be a two. And that's gonna be then a three. Oh, there we go. It's gonna be minus two rend. So it's gonna be a six up. Oh, they got it. That would have been D6 damage. So lucky, lucky Stormcast. So that's that. Now we're gonna do charge here, which, yeah. He's just outside three, so I need a three. There we go, there's a four. I could do command point to get more. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm spend, I got a command point to spend. I reroll that charge. That's yeah, six, that's better. Okay, so they're all in here. Uh, do a little bit of pile in now, actually. So a count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And uh, that guy has the extra stuff. Okay, so we're hitting on, let's see, threes here and wounding on fours, and the blue ones are minus one rend, and these are real long ones. Okay, fours. These are minus one. So there's gonna be five ups, these will be four ups. All those. So we've got five damage. So we'll pop two of these and put a damage on one of them. And these guys will swing back. Uh, let's see, it's threes and fours. Doesn't really matter here. Oh, there are no fours. Oh, look at that. And those are just normal. So those will be six up saves for the Reavers. That's going to be three more dead Reavers. Let's see, uh, once again, no battle shock for them. These guys lost two guys, so they have bravery seven. So if they get a six, another guy will lose. Nope, just two, so they're okay. So that's the end of turn three for corn. This guy over here is going to get an extra uh, victory point there. You can see the two's facing uh, that way. 
But then over here, these guys are trying to move up to help. So that's going to be now three to three. And we're going to roll for initiative because nobody got any points for that center one because there's no hero there. So turn four. Oh, it's a tie, which means whoever went first last turn keeps it. And that's going to be the Stormcast. So we serve the battlefield. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and pop this up to a three. So don't forget. Uh, he's just going to stay there. He's been doing a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> uh, well, he has, he has cast some Arcane Bolt over on this guy to kind of whittle him down. Uh, these Judicators are going to be here. These guys are going to be there. So these guys are locked in combat, although they can shoot into them. So these guys are probably going to get wiped out. Um, and then these guys are going to try to move in. But they're sort of separated. You can see that here. You have this line of Reavers there. So they have to be very, very careful about how they move in there. So this ordinator down here, he's sort of sitting there. So I think we can have this guy shoot and probably peel off some of them. These guys will shoot into them. These guys will shoot into them, I think. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. So, so starting with the hero phase, um, he's not gonna do anything. This guy over here, he might as well. Here's the thing. If I cast Arcane Bolt on that guy, and kill it. That's gonna give them the fifth uh, blood tithe point so they could just summon a fresh one back or a group of blood crushers, which could cause all kinds of problems. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna have him hang out, do nothing. That's okay. And then we're gonna dump all shots into these Reavers, which will give them that blood tithe point, but I don't care about that. Be, well, shoot. So I'm, I'm going to try to give them a blood tithe point anyway, and they can't do it until their turn. Ah, screw it. I'm going to I'm going to do the arcane bolt over here to this fella. So arcane bolt over here, a five. So that is a five, but it can be unbound, and it is. So nothing anyway, no big deal. And then now we're going to do movement. The only real movement we're going to do is, huh? I tell you what, we are going to move uh, these guys down here. I think I only moved three inches or so. We're just going to start to inch him up. We'll get the Lord Ordinator out in front a bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's got to help score points, right? You can't just sit back here all the time. All right, so this guy moves up three. Scooch him out there. Now, the Ordinator has to be within a certain amount. So he can move five. Well, he's only got to be within nine inches. So let's actually, we'll have moved him first. That's seven. Two, if we take a look there, he's getting sort of, close to that. He can even charge them if he really wanted. He would still be within nine. So they're moved up. This guy here is going to just run along with the Griffhound. So five plus one is six. Okay, so this guy's going to move. Oh, he's got to be outside of three anyway. Whoopsie. Getting ahead of myself. So either way, same with the Griffhound. So I could charge him in there. I might do that. I might just charge him in there to get him in there because, you know, maybe have have him attack first. I don't know. I don't want him to die, but maybe we'll, yeah, it's gonna be interesting because I'm gonna pump a bunch of shots into them. So they may not even be there to do. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do this ballista into there. Now that's close enough that it can do its cool attack. Now this is four attacks hitting on fives, but you can still get the D6 hits. So we'll see. Uh, actually it's hitting on fours now because of Lord Ordinator. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> so D6 hits, that's three hits. And that's going to be threes to wound. That's good. Three wounds, minus two rend, and it's only one damage each, but that's just going to pick off three. Now, which ones would this guy want to move away? I would say we'd pill these three away. And now these judicators will shoot into them. So threes. Uh, so that's uh, D6 hits on that one. This is one. Uh, these are both minus one rend. Oh my gosh, they missed. Okay, so we'll do the other group over here, over there. So we're gonna do the same idea. Threes. This is D6 hits. Oh, that's six, so threes minus one rend. Oh, that's more like it. That's minus one rend, so they don't get a save. So it's two, four, six, seven. Is that how many are left? Oh, there's less than seven. So that wiped that unit out, which is good and bad because now he can't charge and start claiming that point. Ah, but that does wipe that unit and that's gonna give them, they're gonna have their fifth um, 
blood tithe point. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So that's all of the shooting. And there's not going to be combat. Nobody's going to be doing any charging. So we're going to bump this up here. That's three points for that side. So now it's six to three. And we're going to go into turn four for corn. I think I got a little bit carried away, actually, because I should have killed that uh, blood secrator. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know about that because, yeah, I don't know. That's tough. That's a tough call. Because I kill that and that kind of deflates everything, but they're going to summon back stuff anyway, because now they've got uh, five. I um, mean, they could add a six one, a six blood type point, and I can get in some kind of uh, charging or cannon or something, because I really, I really need to unlock this and score that. Uh, now they could even move into that. Yeah, so here's a tricky thing. So we are going to definitely get our three points here. That's going to tie us up, because they're not going to get messed with there. These guys are gonna move up. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this guy up just outside of three. He's definitely within three here, just outside of three there. So he could charge into them if he wanted. Actually, before he moves, I forgot, he's got a really cool thing. He's definitely within range from here, but he's gonna cast a prayer, which is gonna boil their blood for D6 mortal wounds if he gets it off and he can reroll it, which is deadly as hell. So there's that, now he's gonna just do D6 mortal wounds. And there's five. <laughs> So that's just going to uh, wipe that unit there. So one, two, three, four, five, yep. That's a really deadly thing there. Very underrated uh, unit, that Slaughter Priest. Okay, so he's in there, and so he's he's now locked in. He's got a claim on that, because he's the first one within three. So even if Stormcast get a guy within three inches, you, they don't take it back. They've got to either make this guy you know, run away for some reason or kill him, and then it'll switch back to them. Uh, so at the end of this round, Corn's going to be ahead by one point. Uh, let's see. So this guy's going to stay over here. You can't see him behind the, the mountain there, but there's him. Uh, these guys are going to run up here. So let's do a run. That's going to be a plus five. Uh, so that's going to be a total of seven. That's there. He's going to stay put there. I am going to summon a thing. It's got to be wholly 12 inches within a hero. So this is kind of my lead point guy and then nine inches away from everything else. So actually that was good that these guys moved up because that kind of sort of isolates this area from being able to summon anything. So I am gonna summon, what's better, cannons or blood crushers? Or I could even pull out another hero. That's an interesting idea. It's not as fun, but here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I could summon this blood master here. Tuck him just behind this thing right here, like so. You can't see him, he'll be there. He'll then be capping that point there. But, you know, there's only one more round, so he's going to do that, and then this guy now could start moving over to here. And so now we've got two heroes in the mix there. That's not super great defense, though, because he's going to die, he's going to die here, the cannon. All we've got is this little thing of blood warriors. So I'm not going to do that, because I've already got that locked down. So I'm going to do I'm going to summon, let's say, some blood crushers. That's these guys. And, but I got to get him in a spot where they're nine inches away from stuff. So that's going to be a, a sec to figure out. So there we go there. You can see some funky maneuvering. They just came spilling right out of his portal there. So now we've got uh, this happening. So they could do a charge, those guys. Uh, let's see, this guy's got some shooting he could do. He's probably got line of sight to him. I don't know, though. Yeah, he totally has line of sight to him right there. Well, let's shoot into the adjudicators. I don't like them. So he's got to hit on a three, though. Let's see. There's that. Three again to wound, and no wound. Okay, so that's the shooting. Uh, these guys, the blood crushers, are going to charge them and mangle them. So they've got nine, but they also have the banner and the horn and stuff. So let's see what they get. Uh, that's nine anyway. But I think I'm going to add to that. Yep, and I just looking at their little war scroll there, they also get D6 uh, wounds, possibly. So let's do a charge on them. And I got to roll a D6 on a four up. It'll be D6 more wounds. Uh oh. Is it D6? Oh, it's only D3. It's only if I have six or more in the unit. So D3, so that's two. That's gonna kill off one of these. I'll kill this one. Right there, he's dead. And then we're gonna go back over here, and then these guys will charge into the priest. Anyway, I think earlier I said I was gonna charge with them, and I just realized I ran with them, so I can't charge. Uh, and that's gonna be combat. This is gonna happen over here, and that's not gonna be too hot for 
our little arrow buddies. So I do need to check if they're within uh, eight inches of this fella here. Let's do a quick check there. Oh yeah, definitely within eight. So they can reroll hits. And when they make a hit roll of six, then that's actually gonna be a mortal wound. So they get, on their blades, they're gonna get one attack each, but the leader gets an extra one and then the hooves. So we're looking for sixes here, reroll and misses. Okay, and we're looking for what were fours. So that's two, and then that's will be threes to wound. Got that, that's minus one rend. That'll take them to five up. So that's that's one dead. Now we're gonna do the hooves. And again, we're gonna reroll these. These are threes and threes. And reroll, oh, look, good thing we had that. Yeah, and threes again. Uh, pull those out. And those are just normal, yeah, no rend. So fours. Uh oh, <laughs> that would be one, two. Yeah, so there's just gonna be the prime left after that. Those guys are pretty murderous. Uh, so he'll swing back, freezing force. Oh, four, no, no, okay. So that's all that, and then battle shock, bravery seven. They lost four, so four plus, he's gone. And that's gonna be another blood tithe point, putting us back to one. Because when you spend your blood tithe points, it goes automatically to zero. Even if I had bought something that was cheaper, this would go to zero, but now I can start to accrue blood tithe again. Ooh, interesting. And so they're gonna get four points this round again for that one, and then the other one over there behind there, which I already moved up to three. So it's gonna be, let's see, seven to six. I don't know that um, these guys can do anything. Okay, they could capture this back, but there's no way that he's gonna kill this guy, because this, I mean, he could. This is gonna be a little bit tight in here. Um, these guys can come over here, the, uh, the murder host guys, the crushers, and then kill this guy. It's gonna be, I think it's it's basically corn, but let's go ahead and play it out here. Uh, so that the initiative roll is actually gonna be pretty important. So blue Stormcast. Okay, so Stormcast is first. <laughs> and let's take a peek down here. This guy down here has that ballista, has a line of sight on them. You can shoot him in their Achilles heel, as it were. So he's got that range. We have no more Judicator units, which stinks. And we have, we have nothing. <laughs> we have this priest here. So he's gonna pull off some shots. Okay, he's gonna get them. I'm just gonna kind of work it out in my head here. Uh, the priest could come in here. He's probably not gonna kill him. Uh, hmm. So, okay, so we are gonna get four this turn because there's no way that, you know, we're not gonna get the four. So that's gonna put him at 10 points. So the only way that Stormcast can win is if they take this middle one because this is gonna get four. Whoops, that's gonna get four. There's nobody that can get over to that because we could just screen it off here. There's no reason they wouldn't do that. Uh, this guy here, you know, and they could also do a blood tithe uh, if they get one more blood tie, they could summon that hero, that corn hero, this guy here, which would be another hero on their turn, like so. Well, let's play it out a little bit. So they're first, they're gonna get a shot off. Well, you know, he could shoot this priest here. I don't know why I'm thinking about that. Cause this is not terrain, that uh, uh, that little marker there. So he could shoot at him and he's thinking he's within 18. And dur -dur -dur, this guy here on the, here, he could cast Arcane Bolt on him as well, because he's definitely within 18, I'm sure of it. Oh yeah. All right, first thing we do there, Arcane Bolt. That's a five. So we got a seven, but that could be Unbound. Ah, it is, it's a Unbinded. Okie doke, that's that. And this Priest doesn't have any offense on him. Uh, so we're going to have that Ballista shoot out there. He's within 18, I think. Oh yeah. So he's gonna get four shots on fives, or fours, because of the, the ordinators there. And uh, so this would be D6 hits. So that's 11, three. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. This guy wants to move in. For some reason in my head, I had him within three, but obviously he's not. So he moves up a little bit, whatever. Gets just outside three there. Um, and then back, sorry, back to shooting here. Uh, so this is going to be all these hits, and these are wounding on threes, and these are minus two each. Eesh. Okay, so that's minus two rend on. Ooh, five up save, and 
those are two damage each, so he don't save nothing. And he's going to get popped. So good thing I didn't give up. So he's popped, but again, that gives another blood tithe. So they've got enough, enough points now to summon uh, back a hero. So this is going to switch off now because now he's within three. This is going to switch off to here. It's still going to be tight though. Okay, so that is is shooting. Yeah, there's nothing else I would have done. I, I keep in the ordinator moved. I don't think I said so he can stay within that range uh, there. Oh, so they now are going to get five points. They're going to get the one there and then the four there over here for five. So they're up to 11. And then the um, corn is going to get four, which will put them. Oh, that'll put them at 11 as well. Because if this, this is going to go up to four, they're going to camp this. So they could just hold for a tie. Now you have to look at how many uh, points that you killed in case of a tie. And I'm not sure, I know that doesn't include these blood crushers if they died, but I don't know if that would include the uh, adjudicators. Yeah, that would include adjudicators. This is any new units that are added to the army um, there. So definitely, I have to do some quick math. I think corn can just sit, they can sit on a tie because they've killed more uh, units or more points worth of units. Uh, Cause we had this group here, prosecutors, two units of adjudicators. Let me add it up. Let me do it real quick. Yeah, so the corn player killed 440 points and then the stormcast player killed 310 points. Now if, yeah, it's crazy. So if the stormcast had killed uh, this skull cannon, then they would have won. Cause that's an extra 150 points, which would put it at 460 points that they killed. So they would have been up by 20 points or even the blood crater. How many points does he cost? He cost is 100, 140. So even either one of them and they were at one point. Um, well, they wouldn't have been tied though if they didn't get this. Um, so yeah, that's crazy. So it's a really, really close game, but there's no reason for corn to move or do anything. They can just sit here and then win on points. So yeah, I think that's the game unless I'm forgetting something. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, very, very close. Uh, one of the closer uh, battle reports that I've done on the channel in terms of how the outcome worked. And it came down basically a tie and then one on points. Uh, I'm sure there was a couple of tactical errors, at least a couple, for either side that would have swung it maybe a little bit more dramatically. Um, had the corn have that ability to summon stuff out and drop out a you know, decent sized unit. Uh, and if, if you would have worked it a little differently, you can get up to like a bloodthirster that you could just drop on the board, which at like a thousand point game would just be, you know, a nightmare to deal with because you don't have enough stuff usually, uh, to handle that. Uh, but yeah, so I think the only thing I could, I'm trying to think here of what Stormcast could have done differently. I mean, other than killing the stuff at the end, like I mentioned, if they'd have killed either the blood secretor or the cannon, that would have given them the points thing, but they had to try to clear it and then flip it for a tie anyway. So they were kind of caught up there, but maybe if the adjudicators had come out a little earlier and then sort of screened off that central spot, that might've been a better plan, but those guys end up getting killed anyway um, and then getting flipped over. So that, that might've been what should happen instead of holding them back that extra turn. Cause I think they came out turn three. Uh, maybe if I drop them, I don't know, turn one or two, Although I think they just would have been chewed up by the, the Reavers. Because those Reavers got through those sequiturs on that far flank pretty quickly. Uh, and then you would have, you still would have had <laughs> these, these mounted uh, demons here come and just wreck them. They just can chew through, you know, okay units in terms of melee pretty quickly. Or I could have put another cannon out. Now the cannon, you didn't get to see it do uh, as a melee. It's actually pretty decent at melee as well. And then it gets like these extra shots. So it can do like double shots on a turn, shoot and then fight. And if it does some wounds, it gets to shoot again and so on. So it can do a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Showed you some different units that I haven't showed you before. Uh, probably could have involved the Stormcast leader a little bit more. I mean, he was doing, it is hard when you can't move him off the objective, right? So I've kind of come back to that. But when you, you can't normally like, normally you can screen stuff off. You get the objective, you tap it, say that's mine. And then you kind of build up a little fortress and stuff or do whatever around it. And then you can sort of go fight and then go kill and then really use all your toolkit and your toolbox and get your leaders in there. But here they're like, they're anchored, they're sucked back into these sort of extreme positions. So it makes for an interesting uh, sort of dynamic in terms of the tactics on the table and everything. 
Uh, but yeah, so anyway, so I hope you enjoyed it and uh, take care. Hopefully we'll do another one soon. Thanks.